Hi, I'm Elise and welcome to Witch Way. Today's Witch Law review is on the TV series Siempre Bruja, Always a Witch. This supernatural drama ran for two seasons across 2019 and 2020. It stars Angela Gavina as Carmen Aguilus, Dylan Fuentes as Johnny Key, Sofia Arujo as Alicia, Dubin Andres Prado as Danielle, Valeria Emiliani as Maite, and Carlos Quintero as Leon. Carmen is a slave in Cartagena and she is tried for witchcraft. Sentenced to being burnt at the stake, she embraces her abilities and is flung into the modern era. She adapts quickly to her new life but can't forget her past and must figure this out before dealing with her new future, which itself has obstacles for her to navigate, both magical and otherwise. <laughs> Before coming to the modern era, Carmen is accused of witchcraft in the 17th century. Under the Spanish Inquisition, Cartagena did indeed have a series of witch trials, as they feared the slave population were practicing witchcraft. Most of the accused were tortured and, if they confessed, were committed to a jail sentence, a public shaming or a lashing. When Carmen is locked away, she hears another prisoner commenting on her tears. Dicen que las brujas no lloran. They say sorcerers don't cry. This was a common folklore belief and used as a method of identifying witches in the Malleus Maleficarum, among other sources. Carmen does not confess and is sentenced to death. This is exactly what happened to those who did not confess. Apparently her mother, Paula de Aglus, received the same fate, but not the real world Paula. Paula de Aglus was tried for witchcraft not once, but three times. A freed slave, she earned her income as a washerwoman and healer. Hers is a fascinating story and if you want to hear more about her, I highly recommend checking out the Missing Witches podcast episode on Paula Agus, which I will link below. To be honest, her story is way more interesting than Carmen's. Since time travel was available to them, I would have loved to have seen Carmen travel back and learn more about her mother's life, or even learn from her mother, instead of just going back and running into her friends wearing very bad mutton chops. Other real world figures and images do pop up briefly in the show. Gregory Rasputin, a Russian mystic, and Albertus Magnus, who had interests in alchemy and astrology among many other studies. We also see a picture of Goya's painting known as Witch's Sabbath, and an image from the Compendium Maleficarum edited to depict the series' villain. Many witches appear throughout the series with varying abilities. They can divine people's future using palmistry, which reads the lines of the palm, and tassiography, or reading of coffee grounds. They can produce flames, manipulate animals, control minds, levitate, contact spirits, have telekinetic capabilities, heal, and have knowledge of potions, herbs, spells, and curses. When Carmen thinks she has been cursed, she performs an egg cleanse. This ritual is indeed an actual practice, believed to remove negative energies, such as the evil eye. These witches note down their spells in their Book of Shadows, which can only be read by a blood or lineage witch. We can see a few magic symbols in this book, such as a pentagram from Agrippa's Three Books of Occult Philosophy, and the main symbol seems to include the third pentacle of Venus from the Key of Solomon and other occult symbols, though most of the other symbols seem to be stock images. As goes for the tattoo parlor, I liked that they included this as tattoo magic is fascinating. Used by many cultures, it is indeed usually done with the traditional stick and poke method. Carmen refers to an eye of Horus for a protection tattoo. An odd choice given her history, but this symbol does indeed represent protection. 
Carmen already has her own magical tattoo in the form of several heptagrams that appear as her magic grows. Heptagrams or septagrams have many occult meanings, but in particular, members of the Blue Star Wiccan tradition can actually receive this heptagram or septagram as an initiatory tattoo. This series scores for lore, history, and the craft. Power seems to be inherited, but can also be imbued. I would love to know if any more of these spells or rituals are based off real practices. So if they are part of your practice, let me know in the comments. This series is apparently based on the novel Yo Bruja by Isidora Shakon. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Though from the description of this book, you wouldn't know it. So it seems to be a really loose adaptation. If you have read this book, please let me know and see how it compares to the series as the series did have a few problematic themes that they tried to smooth out in season two. It seems that this series was left it for a season three, though that has yet to be confirmed. This series grew on me as I watched it and it looks absolutely beautiful in some of these tropical locations. And let me know what you thought of it in the comments as well as any other witchy films or series recommendations for my witch lore reviews. And as always, if you liked this video, please make sure to like, share and subscribe to keep me going. And thank you very much for watching here on Witch Way.